Hi, this is Jared from Shunome, and today I want to talk about site models in ARCHICAD. Uh, specifically, I want to talk about how to create uh, clean, fast, loose, schematic site models. Site models that provide nice context for the architecture, but don't get bogged down in all the um, perfection and exactness that comes from taking data from a survey and creating a hyper-accurate model. So for instance, you can see in this image here, there's not a lot of contours. There's a top and a bottom. We just created a slope and it's nice and clean. Uh, before we get to the first model, and we're going to look at a couple of different projects I've worked on, I want to first say thanks to my daughter, Madeline, who edited all these different uh, clips of different models together. Uh, Madeline, thank you. There's no way I could have done this video without your help. Two, I want to point out that everything I show today is based off the Shunome open template or ARCHICAD. If you're not familiar with my template, it's on my website. There's links in the description below. Uh, the template is free. You can click a support button and throw some money my way to say, hey, keep up the good work, keep developing it. I love it when people do that, but the template's too important. So I don't want it to be behind a paywall. So it's out there and free. Uh, and the reason to download it is everything we're talking about in this video is derived from that template. So uh, there's going to be a lot of favorites that I mention that's all that are all in the template. So if you see something I do, you should be able to go to my template and start with the same building blocks to create all the things you see. Okay, let's get going. So starting with the street, uh, right here we've just got a rectangle. I've used the mesh tool, uh, but this could be the slab, a slab as well. Um, kind of if it's a flat site slab is great uh i default to a mesh just in case i have to you know grab a corner and and lower it just offers a little extra flexibility now with this mesh uh, i've made it using the earth building material and that's because when you cut through the site i just wanted to see like an earth um hatch i don't i don't need to see that the road is concrete uh, but I did override the top surface uh, to be the whatever the road is. So in this case, uh, asphalt. It could be concrete. It could be just like um, a dark gray or a, a black. You know, whatever, whatever makes the most sense. So that's that's the street. Going ahead to do the curb. Same thing. Uh, I've just made a you know six inch wide mesh. Uh, for the curb, and I did that on this side too. Over here, uh, for the grass median, again, it's another mesh. It could be part of this bigger mesh, but it was just easier for me to, you know, make it as a separate thing. Um, now, let's take a look at this. This is the overall site mesh. So, uh, the way I did this is I started, uh, I made a, you know, a big rectangle in plan. Change the geometry method here. So I made a big rectangle in plan, and then uh, right click, select an activate tool, uh, click in any spot, and we're going to um, create a hole here. So I created a hole, and then you know shape that hole to match the house. And so if we did that in plan, find that mesh. So right click or select it, select an activate tool. Um, get the, you know, that, and so again, create a hole. Uh, the other thing you could do is you could click on the edge, click here in the pet palette, you make the hole. And what you do is you, you measure or you trace around the house to create the hole. So that's, um, you know, that's what's going on there. If we go back to 3D, you've cut that around. Now, once you've cut that hole, um, of course, if you have... Uh, contours, then I've got a video for that, how to draw in all the contours. But if you just need a basic site to start with, you can do, you know, create that hole, Let's select that, delete it. And then uh, simply grab one of the corners and, you know, say, lower it down a foot. I did negative one, but I was going down. So negative one from down was positive one. Um, if that makes sense. So I'm, I'm now just going down two feet. Uh, and why I'm doing that is now if you look at this, there's a subtle slope away because in um, like a building elevation, let's go to this this one. You want the ground to either be perfectly flat or to show like um, 
a slight slope away from the house. In in this case, I did it all all flat. Let's go back to the model. So that's that's building a mesh. Now here for the driveway, there's two techniques for this. One, uh, you cut a hole, and then you put in another mesh that is the driveway, the sidewalk, whatever. Uh, but there's a pretty nice technique um, using solid element operations to get a driveway or sidewalk to, to follow the mesh. And so I'm going to show you guys that here right now. So to do this, I'm going to take a um, slab. Let's just say, here's, here's our slab. Let's make it 10 feet tall. Let's elevate it. I'm using Command 9. Make that 10 feet tall. Okay. So now let's make this 20 feet. So I've got a slab here. I'm going to take this slab and I'm going to uh, command option for solid element operations. I'm going to make this the target. I'm going to make this the operator. And I'm going to go intersection. Now what I've, so what happened is it took this slab um, and it shrunk it down to only be the part of the slab that intersects with the mesh. Now at the second step, we're going to make this the operator and this mesh the target and go subtraction. Now when you hit execute, um, this is this weird double operation. So now this slab uh, cuts away the mesh that it sits in. Um, and so this is really great because now you can create a pathway that follows the contour of the mesh. So if I take this and I go down, you can see that that is now um, following the contours of the mesh. And so it's it's a really great thing for doing um, you know, sidewalks, driveways, whatever, where you want to have it follow whatever strange contours are on a, on a site. You don't have to build a complicated mesh next to a complicated mesh. So that's one technique of creating a driveway that slopes with the contours. This is the other of you know, just making a mesh. Now over here, uh, I cheated a little bit and this is just a slab and I elevated it uh, like half an inch. Let's see, is it half an inch? Not even, I think like a quarter of an inch uh, above the grade, just so it, so it looks nice and floats. Because again, this is just schematic and I didn't really care if this is perfect in 2D because it's gonna look great in 3D. So this is just, um, thin slab floating above the mesh. Now, this stair uh, is the stair tool. Now I have a, a simple stair favorite in my template. And I should mention that pretty much everything in here is all favorites uh, in my template. So this mesh is. So this stair is simple to do a site stair uh, for these front steps. There it is. Uh, these guys right here, in, in Seattle, we have a lot of rockeries. So like rock walls and they're more naturalistic than this but when you show a client this they get it and it, it looks pretty you know it it's it's good enough and so what this is uh is again have it saved as a favorite this this boulder wall object uh in archicad let's take a look at it it's called boulder wall 25 um you can set the approximate boulder size, the slant of the wall, whether it angles on the sides and miters and all that. So you can you can mess with these. So just for instance, we can make it uh, how big the boulder is. So you can make them tiny boulders, you can make them big boulders. You can change the slant of the wall to make it, you know, really steep or shallow or vertical or whatever. When it slopes into miters, that gets a little wonky, but you can just mess with that and it's, it's fine. Um, here, uh, jumping back to this mesh, I've added in a, let's go select and activate tool. I've added in a contour line, which is just uh, an L shape. So let's go add new points. So you're basically creating just like an L right there. And the reason why I have that is I want to be able to keep this all flat for my sections and elevations, but then have it slope down here. I can see slope here for uh, to get down to the garage. What's nice about doing that, uh, something to note, we go to the floor plan here. So this is the uh, the new contour lines I just made. We click on that and hit the Z in plan. 
we can change the height and we can go apply to all and that will apply to all of the points that are connected so that it will change to 10 feet these three so if we hit okay go back into the model you can see that all went up crazy so let's redo that just to show you one other thing uh we can select just if we click on just that uh, mesh line we can just hit delete we can delete it and it goes back so those are the techniques I want to share in this model. Let's go ahead and switch to a, another model, and we'll talk about some other modeling techniques. So this model uses a lot of the same techniques as the previous one we just looked at, uh, with a couple of variations. So first off, uh, here we've got the driveway right here. These again are slabs that have the uh, intersect with the site. So let's, um, you know, if we select this, make that the target, we make this the operator, we do intersection, and then we again take this, make this the operator, make the site the target, and do subtraction. That's how we get you know, the path to be you know, perfect. Now, it's worth noting that when you do this, the two things are flush, so if you want it recessed, you have to uh, break these apart and model this as a separate mesh than the rest of the site. Now, if you ever want to do that, um, and you want um, you know, two side-by-side -side meshes to follow the, you know, side, kind of have the same contours, uh, it's really easy to do. You, you create one, get the other, and then you just uh, adjust the Z, and you can do this in 3D and get it all to line up nicely. Now, uh, something else that's important to know is when you're creating a site, if you're creating just a schematic one, you're not following, you know, you don't have like topo that it's doing all this. You're just, you just want to create that nice slope. Um, when you do that, you want to create points that are uh, both at the intersection of the building and at the edge of the, um, the mesh so that you have nice, uh, a nice clean mesh. Otherwise, if you don't, have all these points in here, you'll get some uh, funky tri triangulation. Let me show you that. Uh, so show all ridges here and show all ridges sharp. You'll see we get this, like, you know, that line there where, uh, as if I undo this and do that same thing, show all the, um, all the ridges, then we get, you know, that nice those nice clear things. So uh, this is another thing might as well point out while we're here. Uh, you can show all ridges or just user-defined ones. I typically show just user-defined ones because it's not going to create all the the joints between all the weird triangulation. And then I do all ridges smooth so that they basically vanish. Now, the next thing I want to talk about in this model is uh, this rock wall here. Uh, it's simply a mesh with a surface of stone wall. Um, this is not the prettiest stone pattern. Clearly, you could find a better one, but for my purposes, it worked just fine. I set the top of the stone wall to match the top of the mesh over here, and then just sloped it, eyeballed it to make it look, you know, good enough for the purposes to replicate the uh, old stone wall that's there. This road is done the same way as they did the other thing, uh, the, did the road in the other model. I think the last thing I want to show here uh, is back here. This isn't really mesh work, but site modeling. Uh, they have a round hot tub, so I made it out of a column. This were done in ArchiCAD 25. I would have done both these as one column as, as a segmented column. For this model, uh, I want to primarily look at the neighboring buildings. So just to give you a sense of what's going on, this house right here, it's actually my house. Um, and the by now you'll see some familiar roads. Uh, this is all, these are all slabs because I modeled the street as flat. Um, and in fact, uh, this gravel here, this sidewalk, this curb cut, this is all more or less Flat. There's no um, transition between them. Uh, this right here, same concept as that 
uh, double solid element operation. This here is just a slab sitting in the mesh. Now, uh, here's... Um, oh, so this rock wall, slightly better color, right? Or slightly better stone. Um, it is a wall that I have set a, uh, a slope to. So you can see instead of it being vertical, it's a sloped wall so that it just slopes a little bit away um, to create a slight sense of something, you know, more naturalistic. Uh, I've since moved on from that to, you know, the mesh, uh, but that's that's kind of a cool little trick. Okay, what else? So something else before I get to the um, neighboring properties. So I've got these trees, which are, again, in my template, uh, it's just the you know, tree object. This happens to have the 24 library because it's an older file. Um, under 3D representation, you can choose whether these trees are, um, you know, autumn or winter or foggy. And then there's also a couple of different uh, tree options you can do. Um, if you use the plant option or the, oh, actually any of them, you can just click here and do custom picture and you can, you can upload one. So actually in this model, I've got, you know, ornamental grasses. So if you load a bunch of JPEGs or PNGs or image files into your um, library, then you can use the same object to create anything. And actually it doesn't have to be trees or plants. It could be a person. It could be a, a vase. It could be kind of whatever uh, image you find that has a transparent background. Uh, but what I want to talk about this here is uh, you notice these trees always face the camera, but they don't rotate with you. You have to um, rebuild the model. So if we right click, we go rebuild, which is uh, command option R on a Mac. And these trees will now zoom and, and face you. So you'll see me do that a lot uh, in some of my videos. Okay, so that's trees. Now let's talk about neighboring houses. These are all morphs. And I actually don't use the morph tool too much in ArchiCAD, uh, but they're great for neighboring buildings. So the way to do this uh, really easily is go to an elevation or a section and uh, draw, you know, select the morph tool. And uh, let's, I'm just gonna put in the ArchiCAD layer. I don't really care because it's just a quick example. Let's make it this so it's nice and red. And uh, now all you have to do is just draw the shape of the house. And I'm gonna do this really crudely. Uh, or my house actually used my house is a guide for the size of the neighboring houses because they're all originally the same size. So anyways, so I've got this, I just drew this um, using the morph tool in section. Now if we go out here, we can see now that it's appeared here and I'm gonna just send this back 20 feet. And so I got that. Um, clearly there's a weird um, uh, model display going on, which is making my model uh, transparent. Actually, this is kind of cool because what this is set up to do is it hides some walls and turns the finish layer transparent, my siding. So now we can see all the structure. You can see kind of the roof forms and how cool that is, but we don't care about that. So let's go back to generic. There we go. Okay. So back to here, we've got this morph that I've just created and, uh, so that's what I did there, I extruded that. And now what you do is you just make, um, I'm gonna resize this. You make all your bits, let's say it's like that. And then um, what you can do uh, with the morph, you can select two morphs, uh, you can merge them. So this is somewhere up in the um, help menu and or where was that? Edit. Let's find again. Morph. So design. Okay. So we go to design, morph. We can union these two. Um, so now they become one morph. So basically what you do is you make a lot of basic elements and then you union them all to create the forms here. If that makes sense. So you can see I made this, I made that shape, and then I made that guy, don't you love my drawing here? And then I unioned them to make that. So same thing I did there. Um, and 
So I did the same thing here. I drew this shape, I extruded it out. I drew this shape, I extruded it out. And then I actually drew in another rectangle here and pushed it in so that we got the sense of the garage door. So for morphs, um, or sorry, for neighboring buildings using morphs, and you can also start with slabs if it's a flat roof building, um, using the morph tool, setting everything to a translucent material. And here I did uh, frosted glass is a great way to make um, neighbor buildings there. Uh, often I also will go take an aerial photo and use that to help place that. Um, but now let's look at another model and see another way to make neighboring buildings. Okay, so here is another project with some neighboring buildings, some neighboring houses modeled in there. This, instead of using the morph technique, I used beams because if you have spent any time listening to any of my videos or talked with me about ArchiCAD in the past couple of years, uh, you know that I'm kind of obsessed with the beam tool and I think it's just the, the greatest thing. So these houses are in fact beams. So let's look at that. Uh, this doesn't work for every neighboring property, but if you have um, like a raised ranch or something that's very uniform, they're great. So I'm going to go and edit some command T, get a look at this beam. So what it is, it's a segmented beam, and each section of the house is a different um, section. So if this didn't have the bump out, it was just narrow, we can just do that, and it gets, you know, we can see here, bump out goes away. Um, I'm going to open the uh, Complex Profile Manager, that's Option P, and here's all of my... Um, complex profiles, and I should have thought to look at what the name is. Okay, neighbor here. So neighbor body, neighbor body narrow, neighbor roof, and then I also did one for the shed. And you can see here, if I edit this complex profile, uh, here's all the parts. So here's the foundation, here's the main body of the house, and then here's the, the roof. And by keeping these all as separate parts, uh, it makes it easy to, you know, say, model this or draw this once, delete those, save it as a different uh, profile. Now you got the you got the roof. That's how that works. Uh, and so you can see here again for the shed, it's a it's a beam with you know one two three segments. Just it's just perfect and great. Um, so I'm a big fan of that. Uh, what I love about both the beam tool solution for neighboring buildings and the morph solution, where you're just drawing the shape and extruding it, so you draw the shape in elevation or section and extrude it, is this is relying on your ability to just draw in 2D. If you're an architect, if you're competent in ARCHICAD, you know how to draw in 2D, you know how to draw a basic shape and extrude it. So that's all this is doing. Let's look at some other things in this model. Uh, these are the railing tool used as a fence. Um, I have a favorite in my template. It's been improved since this model for both a wood fence and a chain link fence. So super easy to to draw and then, you know, have it follow the, the contours of the mesh. Um, out front, you know, same techniques that I've done on all the other models for creating road, curb, um, site, sidewalk and whatnot. Uh, and this is a model where I clearly had a survey, and so I created the topography based on the accurate survey data. And as a result, it's it's great, but um, the street gets a little wonky. So, right, um, if I were doing this today, I might stop the contours so that I can get the street to just be, you know, perfect and not have kind of that weird jogginess. Um, so that's the only stuff I want to talk about for site in this model, but I'll show you one cool thing. Just, right, this is ArchiCAD flexing its power. Here's a house under construction. Um, if you're reading or watching this in fall of 2021, go to my Instagram account. Um, just do know on Instagram. You'll see a lot of photos of this thing under construction. So this house used to be a raised ranch. And if I change the renovation filter from new construction to existing, this is what it used to look like. So 
I think it's always pretty sweet when the old model still exists in the ARCHICAD model and we get to just, you know, jump back and forth between old and new. So you can see, I had already modeled this, so I knew the shape of these houses because there's four of these all in a row that are the same. So I went to the elevation and I just traced this and then, you know, added that line, chopped it up, turned it into complex profiles, applied that to a beam, and I was done. And, uh, when you look at new construction, you can't tell that house used to look like that. It's great. Um, right now, as of today, the house is up to here. We got the we have the trusses on there, and uh, later this week we'll start building the upstairs. So, anyways, so this is the last site model we're going to look at in this video. Uh, this is a larger context than I usually build, and it's a model I actually just did today. So perfect timing. First thing I want to do is I realized when I opened this that there is an error. Uh, this mesh right here should slope up a little more. I'm just going to eyeball it because um, this is actually all just built from photographs, so it's you know best of my ability here. Uh, as I was mentioning in one of the earlier uh, models, you know when you a slope you want to match it side to side so you don't get weird triangulation so what i've done there is created points both sides and now good that looks better right it's turn on all sharp we'll see that there's a line there um if i fiddled with this i probably could get uh that line to go away i think what's happening is this point and this point are different heights um but so we'll go to all smooth so we don't have to worry about that okay so we got that there um We've got some trees. I've made them. This is something else worth noting. You can set the opacity. So I set these to 40%. So they're kind of ghosted in there. I'm going to rebuild the model. So those always face me. Now, um, here, I built this out of a couple of morphs, combined them together. This started off as slabs, turned into a morph. This is just a slab. Um, there's a lot of slope here, but. I made this part here all flat just because we're doing a schematic design and it's easier if this is flat. So later on, my teammates and I can, you know, design whatever box of the building can go here. Now, when I built this, I actually built this model a couple times because I built it first using topo lines from county data, which turned out to be all wrong. Um, so I had to just rebuild it by looking at Google Maps and figuring out, you know, how tall this is here, how tall that is, and then just, you know, eyeball that. Um, but if we look at this right here, uh, this is a, a good path progression for how I build site models. So the first thing I did is in plan, turn on everything so we can see it. Oh, here we are. So in plan, I, I have, uh, an aerial photo or a map from GIS data which has the contours. I scaled it to the right size and then it has all my contours, which turn out to be wrong, but let's assume they are right. I then drew them and, and then use it to create a mesh. Um, I can show you really quick how to do that. Uh, you draw your, and I've got a video on this, but you draw your mesh like this. You select it, right click, select activate tool, hold down space bar and uh, you add your ridges like that. So if you do that, you can see you've added those ridges. You can go back there. Let's just move this out of the way. You select that, hit Z, click apply to all. So this is gonna apply, change this whole um, ridge line. Let's make that 20 feet. Let's click this one, make that 30 feet. Click that here, make that 40 feet. Now when we go back to this mesh, you can see I've now deformed it like that. And then you simply manually change that in elevation or, or sorry, in 3D. Oop. Or you click here and say, okay, I want that to be 20 feet, whatever. Okay, that's a sidetrack. Anyways, so you use that process, you create that mesh. And so that's what I did is I created this mesh. Now I saved that mesh, and I made a copy of it, and I started chopping it up. And the way I chopped it up is 
I have all this line work, right? So let's go here. So I've got all these lines here. And what I did is I put the line work of the mesh and then I selected the mesh uh, and started doing subtractions and I started cutting the mesh up. So now you see there, I now have those chunks. And I kept on doing that with different copies of the mesh until I built up the whole thing. So you can imagine I took this, did this scenario, kept on deleting, like, you know, did the subtraction deleting till I got each different group that I wanted. And then for the road, all I did is I selected it, uh, command nine, which is elevate, and did minus six inches to make it go down to have the curb. And that's how a really quick way I turned some aerial photographs into a mesh and then chopped it up into that and then realized this was all wrong and rebuilt it uh, with a much simpler mesh. You can see how few nodes there are, uh, but it makes a much cleaner model. And so for schematic design, I would definitely do this to start. And then when I had a mesh and I, or when I had a proper survey data and I've got everything correct, then I'll, you know, yeah, if we land this project, I'll rebuild the site with a proper survey data with all the, you know, accurate topo lines. Yeah, so it's just kind of cool, right? This is just using ArchiCAD to model things schematically. And so these are walls. This is a mesh. I just felt like, yeah, that feels about there. This is a um, slab. I felt like the building was about there. So the last thing I want to talk about with this model are these walls. You'll see here that they are flat on top, but they actually shouldn't be. They should be sloped. If we change the model view options from openings off to high detail markers off, we'll see they're now sloped. It's because the model view option was hiding openings. So I can click here, you can see that opening. If I click this button here to show openings, you'll see it ghosted in blue. Uh, what's happening here is it's the opening tool uh, with a polygonal opening, which is a new feature in ArchiCAD 25. So if you're in an earlier version of ArchiCAD, um, you're not going to be able to do this. But if you're in ArchiCAD 25 or newer, uh, you can create an opening, place it in a wall, and then uh, edit the shape in the 3D view or go to a section elevation um, and add nodes and, and shape it however you want. So yeah, it's, it's super great. That's all I've got for you. I know that's a ton of information. Uh, if you have questions or comments or want me to talk more about any of the specific techniques, just leave a comment below or shoot me an email. Um, again, I want to just plug the ShoeGnome open template one more time. Everything I'm doing in here is doable because of that template. The template is available for free on my website. Um, most everything started off as a favorite, and if it's not a favorite in the template, let me know and I will add it because all this stuff should be a favorite. That's how I'm able to do things so fast. And finally, I just want to, again, say thank you to my daughter, Madeline, for editing these videos and putting it all together. I couldn't have done this without you. Thanks, everyone. Have a great night.